You know, as a scientist, I can tell you one of the things I love are graphs. You know, graphs are really helpful. They can really take complex information and make them really quick and easy to understand. And there's all sorts of different kinds of them. There's line graphs and bar graphs and pie graph charts and scattergrams and box and whisker plots and all sorts of them. So graphs can be an amazing thing, and I love them as a scientist. They make things much easier for me to understand. Well, in this video, we're going to actually look at one type of graph. In fact, we're going to look at something called a climatogram, or sometimes called a climate graph. We're going to, so we're going to do two things. The first thing we're going to do is define what is a climatogram, and then the second thing is we're going to practice reading one and understanding how a climatogram works. So remember to write that in your Cornell note sheet underneath big ideas and take notes off of those big ideas and our targets. Well, there's lots of information when it comes to climate, right? We can have, we need to know things like high temperatures and low temperatures, average rainfall, what's that average weather? Because remember, climate is just the average of all the weather for a very specific location over a given amount of time. So what does it look like for Sandy over an entire year? But that's just a lot of data. And sometimes it's really hard to figure out what that data means if you just put it in a data chart. There is a data chart right there. That is all the information you would need for a climatogram for Sandy, Oregon. Now, I don't know about you. I can't just look at that and figure out uh, the relationship to weather and to climate here for Sandy. i just not a number person. But I can organize this into a graph. And that graph is going to give me a visual, a graphic, right, graphic, graph, a visual graphic uh, display of it. It's going to show me the relationship. So if you notice, here we go, I'm going to put one together. There it is for Sandy. So this is a climatogram. And our climatogram is going to be defined as this. It's a graph that shows both the temperature and precipitation for a very specific place. It's going to show us the average temperatures and the precipitation. So let's look at this one for Sandy to see if we can read it. So there's a cut, lots of things happening on this one, and so they can be a little bit confusing if you're not breaking them down. So let's go ahead and start, and let's look at that x-axis down here at the bottom. It's going to show us the different months of the year, right? That's pretty self-explanatory. It's going to start on January. It's going to go all the way to December. And they're always going to be structured down here the same. There's also going to be two y-axis. So let's look at this one on the left over here. What you're going to see on this one is temperature. Now here in the United States we like to use Fahrenheit um, and so it's always going to be Fahrenheit where zero is going to be actually 32 is where water freezes and zero is just much below that and water is going to boil way up at 200. We'll never get there way up here at the top. So for Sandy it only makes sense to go from about uh, zero to 90. It's not a lot of days above 90. On the other y-axis, on the other side, you're going to notice it has inches of precipitation. It's going to be rainfall or snow here in Sandy. How much water falls from the sky? So we have two axes, and so you're going to really put two graphs on top of each other. And you can kind of see that. We have a bar graph that's going to show us the average temperature, and it's going to have a line graph that's going to show us the average rainfall. Now, you can so we can look at this really quick and find out which month is the hottest. Well, we can see for here in Sandy, that month is August. It's the one with the highest different red mark. And now, I did a little extra. I gave you the average high, which is the red, and the average low. So that shows you what's the highest, hottest it's going to be during that month, the average heat, hottest, and the average coolness. So you can see that range. Well, the nice thing, though, about a climatogram is that you can take two of them and compare them to each other. In fact, so here we are. I'm going to let's compare two different clima, climatograms against each other. Let's do Sandy, Oregon, and Sandy, Utah. When I tell people I'm from Sandy, they always pretty much assume Sandy, Utah, but I'd rather be here in Oregon. So let's take a look at it. When you build two climatograms and put them next to each other, you can start to see what weather differences and what climate differences are going to happen and what you can expect. So Looking at these two different climatograms, what's something that sticks out to you right away? Take a second and look at it.
You know, one of the things that I see right away is the changes in temperature. Look at Sandy, Utah. If you look at January, it's only the high temperatures barely get in the 40s. But if you look in July, the temperature in the mid 90s, that's a huge swing. That's almost 50 to over 50 degrees going from the heat, right? From the high temperature in June in January to the high temperature in June. Where here in Sandy, our swing isn't that big. If we were to look at January, it's only, you know, almost 50, upper 40s. And if we look at August and July, August usually is our hottest month, it's maybe only 90. It's almost only 30 to 40 degrees change in difference. That plays a big role, right? Our temperature, our climate here in Sandy is a lot more level than in Sandy, Utah. We could probably try and look at our four reasons to find out why that is. Look at rainfall. When you look at Sandy, Utah, the rainfall is pretty constant, right? And their highest months are in spring. So if you want to go from a rainy day in Sandy, Utah, you'd go for May, April. Is that the case for Sandy, Oregon? No, look at the sand, the rain, wettest months are our winter months. And it goes down from January and December, right? Really quickly, we can see differences in the climates of two different locations. So what did we do in this video? And well, it was a really quick one. One, we define a climatogram, and it's a graph that shows the average temperature and the average precipitation per month for a very specific place. And then we practice reading it. We saw that there's two axes, two y-axes and an x-axis, and that you, each one shows you a different thing about the weather, or about the climate of that, position, of that place. And you can use them to compare climates to two different locations. So I want to remind you how these videos work. If you're not understanding something, make sure that you hit pause and go back and watch it again. You can always rewind it and watch any section you want or watch the whole thing over again. But remember to always keep moving forward.